Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin news. We're going to look at how Bitcoin beats Netflix money heist on Twitter India. We're also going to look at in today's news. So the first article, the first uh, uh, piece of news that we're going to cover is Bitcoin continues grinding higher as stocks gold level off. Then we're going to look at every conceivable Bitcoin metric is on fire right now. And then the last article we'll cover is Bitcoin beats Netflix money heist on Twitter India. And so as everybody knows, the price of Bitcoin is a, is a mixture of two things. It's the fundamentals. In other words, how many people are actually using it? How many addresses are there? how many people are trading it, uh, how much volume is happening at that particular point. So all of the, the measurable number kind of things is part of what, what Bitcoin's value is derived from. And then the other area that it's derived from is kind of more of an emotional aspect. And so while we can look at the price of stocks and gold and the price of Bitcoin and make a comparison between all three, that's really a numerical, a number type analysis on it. While looking at things like Bitcoin beating Netflix money heist on Twitter, uh, that's obviously more of an emotional or sentiment uh, type of driven, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a way of measuring people's interest in Bitcoin because they're talking about it but it's not so numerical based, it's more about people's sentiment. Um, so anyway, just some interesting thoughts. What our channel is all about is should I buy Bitcoin now or wait? We're gonna give you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses, and that's really what we're focused on. We're focused on trying to give you the best ideas and, and ideas that are gonna help you judge the Bitcoin cryptocurrency market in order to purchase or sell your own cryptocurrencies. Now, we don't actually give you financial advice, um, but we are providing you with ideas and that information will help you make good decisions. So, can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash the like button. It really helps us out with YouTube algorithms and with Google and everything else. It really makes a big difference for getting uh, the news about our channel out to the general public. So, uh, my disclaimer here, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion. As always with cryptocurrency, it involves substantial risk. Please read the rest of the disclaimer. You can always pause the video and take a look at it, but you want to be aware of things before you make any investments into cryptocurrency. So Bitcoin right now is 6.57 a.m. Central Standard Time on May the 8th, 2020, and Bitcoin is right at 9890 Whoop, we just passed $9,900. And so in the last 24 hours, Bitcoin is up 6.62%, and the Bitcoin dominance is 68%. So a few days ago, earlier in the week, the dominance was at 66%. So Bitcoin is going up faster than the majority of the rest of the crypto market. Um, but you can see right now, everything is pretty much in the green with a few exceptions. I don't even know why they put USDT on here because it's always $1. And it's silly to say that it's down 0.12% uh, because it, it should have been right at $1 at that point as well. So it, it's always right at $1 with some minor insignificant fluctuations. Let's get into it. Bitcoin continues grinding higher as stocks and gold level off. And so while with the halvening, the Bitcoin halving now several days away, Bitcoin has continued to grind higher in the market in recent days despite a weaker overall crypto market and leveling off in the price of both gold and U.S. stocks. The outperformance of the number one digital asset has been particularly strong after the COVID-19 panic hit the financial markets with full force in March, sending nearly all assets, including Bitcoin and gold, sharply lower. Following the crash, however, Bitcoin has seen a strong recovery in the market, 
possibly helped by investors positioning themselves for the upcoming halving in mining rewards that is expected to occur on May 11th or 12th. And so right now, here is the price metrics. Now the red line is Bitcoin, and you can see since the beginning of 2020, Bitcoin was sharply growing. And then it started to peter off as we began to hear more and more about the uh, COVID-19, about the virus and everything. And then it took a sudden steep decline on March 12th, along with everything else. Now the blue line here is gold, and you can see how gold took a sudden decline on the same date or around the same date. And then this green line is the stock market. And the stock market did the same thing, but on March 12th in particular, it took a particularly steep nosedive. Now, the reason why this is uh, flat like this is mostly because they shut down the stock market in order to prevent the extreme volatility that was going on from affecting the stock market as a whole. But even after they opened it up, it continued to tank even more. But we can see by this red line, while the stock market has not recovered, here's the previous uh, value before the, um, before the crash on March 12th, you can see that it has not re the stock market has not recovered to its, its previous numbers. And even gold is just barely over that previous price, which is right along this line here. Um, we can see that Bitcoin has had a much stronger recovery and is almost at the previous high, but it is, has gone past the point where the actual crash occurred, which was right here. And so Bitcoin has shown a very, very strong recovery and with it, the vast majority of the altcoin market as well. And so while we do see a little bit of a difference in the dominance, over the last few weeks, for the most part, Bitcoin and the entire crypto market has gone up in conjunction with uh, the rest with Bitcoin. So the rest of the altcoins have pretty closely mirrored what Bitcoin is doing. So, um, but if you have a favorite altcoin out there, I would recommend that you pull up that chart and compare it to this one. I think you should see somewhat of a similar pattern. Every conceivable Bitcoin metric is on fire right now. So with the having fast approaching, the Bitcoin market is surging. Beyond price, the number of new and small amount addresses is on the rise while long-term hodlers continue to accumulate. Positive metrics point towards a boom in spot market activity where retail investors are driving the rally. Now, I always thought this was interesting because back in you know, 2018, in August of 2018 is when I first got interested and, and seriously involved with cryptocurrency and the, the cryptocurrency market. And at that time, I was convinced that it was going to be institutions that drove the next new all-time high in price. But based on what's happening in the last six months, um, I'm beginning to think that it's very likely that we're going to see consumers and retail investors driving this rally. Time will tell, but I, 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 think, I think that for me, that narrative has shifted. While we do see a, a significant influx of uh, institutional money, um, it doesn't seem to be pushing the price nearly as much as what the retail investors are doing. So the Bitcoin halving is just days away and trending right along with the cryptocurrency price is the surge in network activity. And that's especially true among new and small account users. As Decrypt reported earlier today, the number of daily active Bitcoin addresses has grown 47% since the beginning of 2020. A growth rate of Bitcoin's network hasn't seen since the go-go -go days of 2017. And so this metric here, this, this chart, is showing you the number of active addresses. And what they mean by an active address is that it's an address that has changed the amount of Bitcoin that it holds over a set period of time. Um, I'm not sure, well, I don't see, maybe this question mark will show us. Does it? No pop-up? All right. Well, typically it means that those addresses have have changed or or uh, 
either increased or sold off Bitcoin in the last, say, six months or so. So unfortunately, we don't have details on how they measured this particular chart, but we can definitely see since May 5th until now, there's been a dramatic increase in the number of small addresses that are actually trading in Bitcoin. And the share of new addresses within the sample size is encroaching on 2017 levels as well. According to Glassnode, data shared on Twitter by Coin Corner CEO Danny Scott, the number of new Bitcoin addresses that have sent their first transaction is nearing 500,000 new addresses. That's significant. What's more, data from Glassnode also indicates that the number of addresses holding a relatively small amount of Bitcoin, up to 1 Bitcoin, 0.1 Bitcoin, or 0.01 Bitcoin, are on a steep upwards climb, creeping towards new all-time highs of 8.25 million, 3 million, and 310,000 addresses respectively. Conversely, addresses with large amounts of Bitcoin, 10 Bitcoin, 100 Bitcoin, 1,000 Bitcoin, and 10,000 Bitcoin, that's an address with about $100 million or more worth of Bitcoin, um, those addresses are below their all-time highs. And so it's really the small investors, since those are at new or approaching new all-time highs, it's the small investors who have only fractions of Bitcoin um, that are actually driving the market because those are the ones that are the most active at the moment. Also, transaction volumes are up 64% year-to-date, according to Glassnode, and Bitcoin's market cap has increased by more than 30% with the price of Bitcoin today breaking 9500 well, obviously that was written a little while ago because right now we're at 9,821 and uh, last night we did break $10,000 just briefly and then it has dropped back down to the $9,800 price level. But that hasn't deterred spot market participants according to data shared with Decrypt from cryptocurrency data firm CryptoCompare. April 30th saw record volumes across both Bitcoin and the altcoins. So the cryptocurrency is on fire right now as we approach Bitcoin's halving. And then finally, I thought this was really interesting, especially because it shows public attitude or public sentiment towards Bitcoin. Um, Bitcoin beats Netflix money heist on Twitter in India. And so money heist has been extremely popular and it was growing and popular in India during the COVID, uh, COVID virus. Bitcoin was trending higher than Netflix money heist early on Friday. Regional interest in the cryptocurrency topped as major Indian publications covered, it over, covered its overnight price rally. The social media trend validated Bitcoin's growing foothold in the world's fifth largest economy. So not only is India the world's fifth largest economy, but they have 1.4 billion people. And I didn't realize this until I looked it up and did the research, but as I showed in, I think it was either yesterday's video or the day before, um, but currently in India, there's about 444 million people that have smartphones. So about a third of India's population holds smartphones. And there's an India company that's coming out with a smartphone app with over 100 cryptocurrencies in it that will allow Indians to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrency right from their phone with an app. And so with that app hitting the market, in fact, you may know the company, have you used CoinSwitch in the recent past? CoinSwitch is the company, it's an Indian company, and it's the company that's backing uh, the smartphone app and that's building the smartphone app. So interesting, the plot of Money Heist revolves around a criminal gang that plans the biggest banking robbery by printing billions of euros in the Royal Mint of Spain. In the real world, central banks are printing trillions of dollars in their response to the coronavirus-induced economic crisis. 
Bitcoin is beating both the fictional and factional factual versions of money printing plots. The cryptocurrency climbed past its February highs, um, and so it's. I thought that was quite interesting, quite a coincidence that here you have a TV program about people printing money, and you have the actual governments today printing money. And Bitcoin is beating both the TV program and the real world fact of money printing going on. So the Hindustan Times, one of the leading Indian news publications, ran an early morning coverage on Bitcoin in association with Bloomberg. And the story discussed the impacts of central bank money printing on the cryptocurrency prices. And so while central banks are printing more and more and more money globally, the, it's going to affect the price of Bitcoin because when you print that kind of money uh, and, and, and do it to that degree, it makes the value of your dollars or the value of whatever currency you're talking about to drop. Every time it's happened throughout history, the price of that currency has dropped. Why do you think Venezuela is in so much trouble? Because they've printed too much money. And the printing of that money dropped the value of the Venezuelan currency to where people were experiencing so much inflation that the money they thought they were going to make on, on Monday was so much less by Friday that they could not pay their bills. And so um, if, if the world starts going nuts printing money, uh, then we will see the same thing. And as the value of currency decreases and becomes less and less valuable, people are going to look for somewhere to put their money that will at least hold its value, which is good for stable coins, or has the potential to grow in value, which Bitcoin historically has grown around 235% annually over the last eight years. And so it's Bitcoin's annual compound interest rate over the last eight years is over 235% per year. That is spectacular. There's nothing else out there that can even come close to it unless you're considering other altcoins, but very few of them even have an eight-year history at this point. And so... Pretty, pretty remarkable. Again, this is just my opinion and it is not financial advice. So before you make any decisions regarding cryptocurrency or any other uh, asset that you're potentially considering investing into, always do your own research. That's why the articles that we've covered today and that, that we cover on a daily basis are always in our comment section on the YouTube channel so that if you want to know more about each or any one of those articles, you can drill into it, dig deeper, and get more information so that you can make good decisions when it comes to your investments and your investing. So how can I be of service to you? If you have any questions, if you have any thoughts, if you disagree with me, I would love to hear your polite disagreements in the comments. Because look, you know things I don't know. I know things you don't know. And when we share what we know together, we're going to grow smarter together. I want to grow smarter together with you. So please do feel free to leave your comments below. In the meantime, like, subscribe, and hodl. And I hope that you have a fantastic day.